Welcome to the T-Birds Zone, streamed every week on suutbirds.com and suunews.com. Today we're on set in the SU News Studios with head football coach Ed Lamb. And coach, we're going to talk about uh, the 2012 signing day. Um, a couple weeks ago, a lot of great names on the list. Really big-sized people. Um, I was looking the the average size of uh, the recruits. Again, there were 28 recruits overall, 20 from the state of Utah. The average size of these guys, six foot three, 224 pounds. These are not small people. I would not be on that football signing list, I'm sure. So, and, well, and I, I was looking at the average size of the defense, the average size again for the defensive line, six foot three, 264. The offensive line gets even bigger, six foot five, 284. Um, you always say you have a um, a certain body mold, I guess, for your recruits. Um, these guys certainly are fitting that bill. Sure. Yeah, we, we definitely put an emphasis on developability. And uh, there are several factors that go into that. I think um, you know, we, we first want to find hard workers, and that's most often evidence to us through a good G grade point average we're looking for. 3.0 plus guys as the beginning criteria, and then after that, the better the grade point average, the the higher the estimation of that player is in our minds. Um, we think work ethic combined with a big body frame and athleticism leads to the most development potential. And uh, quite surprisingly, for some people, we don't actually uh, consider how good of a of a high school football player mm -hmm. a guy is we want to look at of course we want a, a very good high school football player but we want to look at two four even five years down the road or more for some of these guys that plan on serving missions and uh, as oftentimes is the case height is a big factor in that uh, equation well there's two guys two uh, yeah two guys I, again offensive line six four six four six five and then two guys that are six six um again not short players and you talked about that developability you also talked about um, during the signing day a couple weeks ago the desire for people to come to SUU um, there was you gave an example there was one guy who was late kind of was wishy-washy late in the in the recruiting on that day mm -hmm. and it was okay we're gonna move on and do something else sure um, how is it how is how much of an impact does it make having the people's great desire to be here once they get here. It's essential. We have to have it. There's, um, you know, we understand that uh, very rarely are we going to come across a, a Division One recruit that always wanted to attend Southern Utah mm -hmm. from the time he was a young kid. Maybe a guy who grew up in Cedar City, a la Austin Minifee, whose dad played here. He maybe saw himself as an SUU T-bird from uh, from a young age. But most guys in the state of Utah or in the region of the West. They grew up wanting to go to USC or Stanford or, or University of Washington, wherever it might be. And um, what we what we do when we bring them in, we give them a full exposure to what we are academically, athletically. They hang out with our players, they hang out with our coaches. We develop a relationship with them for several months. In my opinion, if they're not ready on the signing day, or if they're not ready by the time they make their visit or within 48 hours of, of that official visit, um, they're not right for us because that's the easiest time to choose Southern Utah. Uh, for all of these guys, all 28 guys that signed with us, the easiest days are right now. After they just signed and they des they decided on SUU, they're excited about it. But come training camp, they're going to get knocked down, and there's going to be some rough days, and there's going to be some rough days academically and socially and adjusting to a new environment, a new campus, etc. So uh, when a guy doesn't want to be here or we even think he might not want to be here, definitely the shine is off for us as well. Let's talk about individuals. Uh, there were two I would call him kind of bigger early signees. Uh, Colton Donovan out of Pineview High School. He's a long snapper, and you wouldn't think that there would be a lot of buzz about a long snapper. That's really not a position you talk about all that much when it comes to football, but he was among the top 10 of um, list of people's signees. So talk a little bit about uh, I, I, how much does a consistent long snapper really play into a program? Um. Well, that, that's the key. Is it is it a consistent long snapper? And and the expectation that all Division One programs have are that uh, somewhere in the high 90s out of 100 are going to be um, perfect snaps, or at least snaps that aren't over the head or on the ground. And and uh, the thing about Colton is he's been able to demonstrate consistently that not only can he put it within the, the target that the punter can catch it, but he can put it exactly on the hip of the punter and the the correct hip of the punter. Our, mm -hmm. 
our um, our punters are both left-footed going into this year, and that was a about a two-minute adjustment for him. And he's already here training with us now, and so um, our punters have been able to give us some feedback on on some of the work that they're doing on the side, outside of the weight room, and with the football. And he's just tremendous. And and so much of recruiting um, attention nowadays are these websites and how many stars or or um, stickers that some some uh, recruit has according to some website and, and Colton has racked up more of those more of that type of attention than any player that we've recruited in the past. Another early signing I wanted to talk about is this uh, Sione Fukufuka and I'm sure I just butchered the name but uh, uh, he's from Tonga really hasn't ever played organized football but a member of the Tonga national rugby development team at the U21 development team um, and again this kid's 6'5 250 you talked about signing day um, his first experience in a weight room and talk a little bit about that and sure. the potential you see in this kid yeah it's all about potential for him and it's possible that um, it's possible that it doesn't work out at all he may mm -hmm. be uh, just totally inept at football and not be able to adapt to this sport but he he's a fantastic athlete no doubt about it fantastic rugby player very limited exposure to weight training and yet he goes in on the first day and uh, reps out 225 on the bench press 14 times which is not <laughs> I mean, it's not unheard of, uh, but it is unheard of for a guy who, who hasn't been exposed to a consistent weight training program. And in fact, uh, you know, just before he laid down on the bench, he was kind of, I saw him asking some of the coaches, you know, like, like this, like this. You know, like he's, he works through his, his English. And, um, but he's a, he's a great young man, a very hard worker. He's proven that already in our off-season program. He's very popular with his teammates already, and, and I think he's going to, going to thrive. And we're really not looking to put a definite timetable on when he makes that adaptation of football. We believe he will, and that's why we invested in him. Very good. Uh, when people look at recruits, uh, fans tend to look at the quarterback signees, perhaps the very first thing they mm -hmm. look at, uh, because the quarterback position is so critical from a fan perspective of how the offensive running. Um, really, just one quarterback signed, well, two quarterbacks, but one that is anticipated to play mm -hmm. quarterback. Austin Young, he's 6'5", 215, out of Colfax, California. Um, Brad Sorensen has one more year. Competition is always a factor in any season. Do you see Austin Young as, the, as an heir apparent body size he looks similar to what Brad Sorensen mm -hmm. is. And is the anticipation to redshirt and then it's Austin show for four years? Or is it more of a you know, it, every year it's going to be wide open and mm -hmm. you got to earn your spot? It's both. Every, every guy that we recruit, the anticipation is that they're going to come here and at the earliest possible opportunity for them, they're going to begin to play meaningful snaps and be the starter in the quarterback's case when you know, usually only one guy takes meaningful snaps at that position. And certainly that's our hope and our expectation of Austin. But... We have that same hope and expectation for Tannen Pedersen, who's on a mission um, right now and will be returning um, for the following season. We have that same hope, and, and we, have, uh, we have trust in some of the guys that have walked on in our program, and that's why we didn't make a big investment in the recruiting class. Now, Brady Arnone is a, is a fantastic quarterback with a bright future out of Washington, and uh, Kenny Schmidt is a, a local uh, Utah guy who's done a nice job for us, and those guys are still very young in their career. Um, and they have unlimited potential. They just need to continue to work hard, but we have high hopes for them too. Last year this time we were talking about who is going to be replacing a deep senior wide receiving core. This year, three of the running backs that saw a brunt of the carries in Austin Menifee and Decker Alexander and Daryl Brown graduated. They, they were the seniors. On the signing list of the 28, there isn't a player listed as a running back mm -hmm. um, but running back again seems like the position that needs to be replaced mm -hmm. what's how how's the coaching staff approaching the the running back situation well the top two guys uh, you got a, a glimpse of our um, situation without Decker and without Austin in the UC Davis game uh, Hannah Brown started that game and played wonderfully and uh, and, and even increased our, our rushing um, totals from what we'd had going into that game. So um, Hannah is the, is the starting running back going into the season. But we also redshirted Miles Crawford-Harris last year, and Miles is having a tremendous offseason. He's, um, he's made some real uh, changes in his approach to the game, his approach to life, his approach to school. And uh, he right now is uh, one of the players on our team that is really pulsating 
<laughs> as a person and um and, and our whole team and coaching staff has high expectations for Miles. And we knew that going into the recruiting season. And so we knew that um, we would have two very good backs. And then, you know, some other guys have carried the ball for us very well in, in limited action. Mike Tagliaferri, Brian Wilson, those guys, of course, are still um, still with us. And, and uh, Lavelle Ica has played fullback in a, in a starting lineup uh, within certain um, personnel packages for us so we feel like that we have good depth on the on the running back position we didn't feel a need to overemphasize in fact we didn't put an overemphasis on any position in recruiting we went after the best young men we could find the best uh, developable players that we could find with the most potential and we tried to keep uh, an eye towards balance in other words there's 11 starters on defense and 11 starters on offense and most schools most years will try to bring in about one guy at every position give or take a few Something unique uh, about this signing class, of of the 28 signees, 20 are from the state of Utah. Uh, looking at the other Division I programs in the state, BYU had five recruits from the state of Utah. Utah had nine. Utah State had four. Weber State had six. That's quite the difference of percentage of players that are signing in the state of Utah at a given institution. Is that a focus of the coaching staff? here at Southern Utah to sign the best Utah talent? It's certainly a focus for us. It's a, it's a um, uh, number one, we feel like that we can win with Utah players, that there's a certain amount of pride uh, taken when a, when a Utah player puts on a Southern Utah uniform and represents this state and this part of the state as, the, as we travel around the West or the country. Um, it's also uh, fiscally the most responsible thing we can do. It, uh, it uh, is about half the cost uh, in terms of a scholarship to, um, to put a, a, an in-state player on scholarship as opposed to an out-of-state player. That cost advantage um, permeates through the recruiting process as well when coaches don't have to travel as far. And, and uh, also, I think, down the line, we continue to uh, build good relationships with Utah high schools, which is where we want to get our mo the most of our players. And then I think we have a, a little bit of an unusual situation in that even though Utah has five Division One. Uh, football playing institutions in the state, which is relatively high com in comparison with other states our size, uh, both y Utah and BYU, I think, as they've moved into the Pac-12 and, and BYU into a national kind of independent status, I think they're looking more and more towards national blue chip players and not mm -hmm. making Utah as much of a priority. Utah State had a nice year, and I think they, in a similar way, they're, they're broadening their horizons, and I'm not sure how much Utah is the priority for them. I think they're going after the best players and, and certainly taking care of the state of Utah. And then Weber State, with the coaching change, I think we were able to you know, maintain some um, continuity in our relationships with Utah high school coaches. And this particular year, it's paid off with a very nice in-state recruiting class. How much of an impact did uh, Southern Utah's transition going into the Big Sky next year play into this year's recruiting class? Um, you know, for us, I think what what the Big Sky does is it gives us some legitimacy long term. I, I think that uh, the Great West just didn't have a long history. There wasn't a historical name recognition. And then so far as the future goes, because it was only a five-team conference, there just wasn't uh, an understanding among high school coaches and high school athletes about what the Great West was. Now, the reality is the Great West was the second or third strongest conference in the country, year in and year out. And we just did not have weak teams in that conference. It was five very, very good football teams, nationally competitive in every way. And uh, the Big Sky, uh, I don't know that the competition is any stronger. There are certainly some strong teams, uh, particularly at the top half of the conference, some very, very good football teams. It'll be a tremendous challenge for our team, but it'll be um, one that our, our guys are ready for. And I think that the the state of Utah, the, the players, the coaches and at the high school level, they feel the same way. Very good. We'll look forward to the start of the season. Still several months out, but uh, spring football is just around the corner, so that can kind of whet the fans' appetites until football kicks off end of August, beginning of September. Very good. Coach, we appreciate you coming in. Uh, you can go to sutbirds.com to read about all of the 28 signees and check out highlight packages from each of them. Again, we appreciate you joining us every week here on the T-Bird Zone, streamed every week on sutbirds.com and sunews.com. We'll see you next week.